Hi. In this video, we're going to look a little bit at one-sided limits with this example of a piecewise function. So we had a previous video where we defined what it means to think about one-sided limits, and we did that problem with a graph. And now we're just going to do this one with an equation. This equation happens to be given as a piecewise function. So. Uh, the other important thing about this problem is that I don't actually have any limit questions that we're asking about here. So one of the things that we will think about with this one is where would it be reasonable to consider limits, and specifically one-sided limits for this function. All right, so if you have not already been thinking about the graph of this function, then now's the time to say, hmm, I probably could think about what this graph looks like, and that might help me to answer some questions about limits for this problem. Uh, you might notice that although this is a piecewise defined function, all the pieces are kind of basic, simple functions that it's pretty easy to think about the graph of those. And certainly if we had more complicated equations where it's harder to get an accurate graph, either by hand or technology, maybe we wouldn't start with the graph. But these are pretty easy. Um, so I'm just going to sketch a little graph over here, and then we'll answer some questions about uh, limits with this function. All right, so first of all, we have the first piece, uh, f of x equals x squared. So we know what the graph of y equals x squared looks like, parabola with vertex at the origin. And we only want the part of that parabola, though, where x is less than or equal to 0. We've got this domain restriction here, x less than or equal to 0. OK, so we want to identify where on that parabola we would be when x is equal to 0, so at the origin. And then we just want to make sure that we're showing the part of the graph where x is less than or equal to 0. So that would be this half of the parabola. Um, OK, so then the next one that we want to think about is the graph of y equals 2x minus 2. I'm going to do just a little quick scratch work graph down here. Uh, y equals 2x minus 2. You should recognize that as the equation of a line with slope 2 and y-intercept negative 2. Um, so I'll just draw the whole line, y-intercept negative 2, and then the slope 2 up 2 over 1. So there's just a little quick sketch of that line. I don't want the whole line, though, for this picture. I just want the part where x is between 0 and 3, not including 0, but including 3. OK, so I want to think about where this line is at when x is 0. Um, so we're here uh, at 0, negative 2. When I put that on my graph up here, though, that's going to be an open circle, because we're not including that point on this piecewise graph. And then this line, uh, when x is 3, so I can just put in x equals 3 into this equation and think about what's the y-coordinate there at x equals 3. And so we'll get uh, 2 times 3 minus 2 is 4. So we'll have a point at 3, 4. And we will include that point. So when I do my actual graph up here, I'm just going to show the part of that line that's from uh, 0, negative 2 to 3, 4. Open circle at 0, negative 2 because of the inequality, not including 0. And then to 3, 4. And maybe I'll be careful where I put this point here. Uh, looks like I have an x-intercept at 1. And that should be a straight line. All right, it's just sketch, so my graph's not perfect there, but there we go, straight line. All right, uh, the next piece of the piecewise function is also a line. Uh, y equals x minus 7. And so maybe I think about or sketch what that graph looks like, that whole graph of that whole line. y equals x minus 7 would have a y-intercept of negative 7 and a slope of 1. So we go up 1 over 1. So it's kind of easy to think about what the x-intercept would be. If I go up 7, I'll go over 7. So we have a line that looks like that. I don't want that whole line, though. I just want the part of the line that is between x equals 3 and 4, not including either of those endpoints. So I want to think about on this graph where we're at when x is 3. right? So I can put in my equation uh, or my point. When x equals 3, I get uh, negative 4 for my y-coordinate. So I have a point over here at 3, negative 4 that I will put. I'm going to use an open circle when I put that on my graph up here. And then when x is 4, uh, when I put 4 in here, I'll get 4, negative 3. So I'll just have a little tiny part of this graph, 4, negative 3. It's kind of messy there. But we'll put it up here on the regular graph and uh, try to be a little bit more precise with that. OK, so I have an open circle here at 3, negative 4, 3, negative 4. And I want to be pretty clear that I'm plotting those carefully. I'm going to be able to use the graph to help me answer some of these questions about these limits. 
Uh, so I want to make sure that I put these, even these open circles, at the right place here. This is at the origin, and we decided that this one was at 3, 4 up here. Uh, and then on this line segment that we're working on now, I've got another point over here at 4, negative 3. So just that little piece there, not including either end point. All right, and then the last part here is a parabola. Uh, y equals x squared minus 13, so an upward parabola, same shape as this, but shifted down 13 units. So we can think about the whole graph of that whole parabola. And again, maybe you do a little scratch work, or maybe you just imagine in your head that whole parabola shifted down 13 units. So this is, have the vertex at, x e or at y equals negative 13. And we just want the part of that graph where x is greater than 4. So I want to think about where that graph would be at when x is 4. So I put 4 into my equation, y equals x squared minus 13. And so I get 4 squared minus 13 is 16 minus 13 and 3. So I get a point here at 4, 3. I'm going to use an open circle there because that point is not included in this interval. And then we'll just have the part of the parabola that goes past uh, x equals 4. OK, so I've got another point over here at 4, comma 3. That's an open circle my graph here and then my parabola, the right hand side of the parabola going up there. All right, so there's a graph of my piecewise function. We can answer a lot of questions about this function just based on the graph of that piecewise function. Um, but we can think about a lot of different things. Uh, what we want to focus on right now is one-sided limits. And so one of the things you should see when you see that graph is that there are some places where the graph is doing some strange things, interesting things, mathematically interesting things. Places where we have breaks in the graph, where the graph may or may not be meeting up. Uh, we've got several different kinds of things going on with this graph. All right, so let's look a little bit at this and think about this function and where this graph might be interesting to consider one-sided limits. Notice, too, we could also answer this from looking at just the equation, but we've talked a little bit about more fluent math problem solvers tend to go back and forth between equations and graphs and sort of use what uh, they can get from the equation, use what they can get from the graph, and pull that all together to answer questions about the problem. Okay, so from either the equation or the graph, uh, you might notice that the places where it's really interesting to answer questions about limits for this problem are precisely at the places where it does something weird, which is where the pieces may or may not meet up at x equals 0, at x equals 3, and at x equals 4. And so we could consider lots of other kinds of one-sided limits for this function, but really those are the places where we have some kind of interesting things to think about and talk about for this function. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this function and talk about as x approaches 0. So we looked at in another video where we talked about some of the notation. I want to look at this function as x approaches 0 from the left. That's what that little minus sign means up there from numbers that are just a little bit less than 0, left of 0. And I could write down function equation, but I'm just going to call this f of x. So the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of f of x. So I can use the equation. I can also use the graph to help me with that. All right, so I'm going to use the graph. Since we have that here, let's use that. And then we'll talk about how we could use the equation as well. So when we're on the graph, I want to look just a little bit left of x equals 0 on the graph of the curve. So that would put me here, a little bit left of x equals 0 on the graph of the function. And then I want to go toward x equals 0, and I want to look at what those y values are doing. So I want to go that way. It doesn't matter whether or not there's a point there at x equals 0. Remember, limits are expressly not about what happens at the point. They're asking what happens as you get infinitely close to x equals 0 on the left side. All right, so as I approach x equals 0 on the left side, those y values, those outputs of the function, appear to be approaching 0 from the graph. All right, I could also think about the function equation when we are using values of x that are a little bit less than 0. Uh, the piece of the piecewise function that I would be on is the first piece, y equals x squared, when x is less than or equal to 0. And so I could also think about that from the function equation and noticing that that's the piece that I would be taking the limit of. I could write it as limit as x approaches 0 from the left of the correct piece that we would be on when we are left of x equals 0. 
And for this one, this is a nice function, a nice well-behaved function, just that function as an equation. Y equals x squared is a polynomial function. And we have a theorem about substitution shortcuts for polynomials, which says you can just substitute in. Remember, that's not what the limit's really about, but sometimes you can use that shortcut when you have these well-behaved, nice functions like this. So we get uh, 0 squared, which is 0. Um, OK, so let's look at the other side uh, for x approaching 0 from the right of this function. OK, so from the graph, when x approaches 0 from the right, I want to be on the graph of the function, just a little bit right of x equals 0, on the graph of the curve, a little bit right of x equals 0, and then move toward where x is 0 and look at where we're headed. It doesn't matter, remember, whether or not there happens to be a filled in point there or not, we're looking at what happens as we get close, not at x equals 0. And that's what this open circle means, is the graph comes right up to there but doesn't touch that point. So those y values are approaching that y value where that open circle is, negative 2. All right, if I wanted to use the equation to think about that, I would need to think about the fact that when I am right of x equals 0, which piece of the piecewise function am I actually using when I am right of x equals 0? And it's the second one, f of x equals 2x minus 2 when x is a little bit bigger than 0. So this would be the function if we wanted to kind of do it in terms of equations that I might think about. This is also a polynomial function, so I can use a substitution shortcut theorem to substitute 0 into this function, 2 times 0 minus 2, we get negative 2. All right, so I'm thinking about this problem both graphically and from the equation, making sure everything makes sense there. All right, um, one other important thing to note here is that I have these two one-sided limits which do not agree. And so when we first started this unit, we started talking about kind of double-sided limits and thinking about just the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x. I'm just going to write that over here. The limit as x approaches 0 of f of x. And for that one, we would say that that limit does not exist because these two are going toward different places on the two different sides. We talked about that really from the very beginning, even though we didn't call them one-sided limits, but we talked about that the two sides have to agree. Otherwise, we would say that that limit does not exist. All right, there are a couple of other interesting places to look at limits of this function. I'm just going to do one more. x equals 3 and x equals 4 are the other two interesting places to look at li one-sided limits for this function. Let's just look at x equals 4 for this one. All right, so we're also going to consider uh, some more one-sided limits, the limit as x approaches 4 from the left of f of x. All right, when I look on the graph of the function, I want to be a little bit left of x equals 4. So here's 4. A little bit left of x equals 4 would be here. And I want to approach x equals 4, get closer to x equals 4 from there, and look at what those y values of the function are doing. So on that side, as x approaches 4 from the left, those y values are approaching negative 3. If I wanted to use the equation, function equation, I would think about when I am a little bit left of x equals 4, slightly left of x equals 4, which piece of the piecewise function am I on? And I'm on the one that includes the interval where x is less than 4. So I would be on this piece, x minus 7, a polynomial again. So we can use a substitution shortcut to say that we're going to just evaluate this for minus 7, negative 3. OK, so both from the graph and from the equation. And if I look at the limit as x approaches 4 from the right, uh, using my graph, I want to be on the graph of the function, a little bit right of x equals 4. So that would be over here. Go toward x equals 4 and look at what those y values are doing. They're headed right to that point. That open circle means it goes right up to that but doesn't actually touch it. So it gets infinitely close to that 3. So uh, we would say the limit as x approaches 4 from the right of f of x is 3. Did that one based on the graph. You can also use the equation. Think about when you are just a little bit right of x equals 4, which piece of the piecewise function you're on. And so for this one, uh, we're going to be on that last piece there, x squared minus 13. Again, a polynomial. So you can use a substitution shortcut theorem 
4 squared minus 13, so 16 minus 13, we get 3. Again, because the two one-sided limits don't agree, we could also say that the limit as x approaches 4 of this function does not exist. Okay, one last thing perhaps to talk about with this function, and particularly at 0 and at 4, one thing that's important to notice here is that one of those values is actually in the domain of this function, and one of those values is not. So when I look at this graph, I might notice that there actually is a point where x is actually equal to 0. And so when we think about function notation, that's what that's about. Input, output of a function, that's about what's happening when we're actually at x equals 0. And I actually do have a point there, at x equals 0, so that's what that's talking about. If I think about 4, though, when you look at the graph of the function or when you look at the equation, you might notice that there is no point where x is 4. I have these open circles that comes right up to there, but not actually at that point when x equals 4. And if you look at the restrictions on that piecewise function, you might notice that x equals 4 is not included in any of those intervals. So for this one, we would say that is undefined. All right, so uh, one important contrast here is thinking about what happens with limits from each side separately. Limits that are kind of double-sided limits from both sides, and function inputs and outputs that are about what actually happens at the point. This is really tying together a lot of what we've been working on this whole chapter. Uh, and I would say that certainly when you're working on a problem like this, if you haven't thought to draw the graph, that would probably be a good suggestion. It can help you answer a lot of questions in terms of what the limits and the function inputs and outputs are.